couple cameras going here to so try to figure out where where folks can see me. Um, Let's tilt down a little bit this way. There we go. All right. So thanks, Paula, for the intro. Still got some feedback. Um, when asked about what month I wanted to do this, I immediately picked January because of this short, dark day. So I, I've always celebrated the winter solstice. And um, traditionally at the park, we did it with a bonfire and hot chocolate. And um, in 2016, a woman called me beforehand and, and asked me about a lantern parade. And I, I said, well, that's great. Bring, bring your lantern. Karen, we're still having weird sound problems. Let me, um, these are, let me mute the and switch. Better? <laughs> okay. I am going to completely turn off my tablet. better now? Yes, that's much better. I, Thank you. I was trying to be too slick for my own good and, <laughs> and use another camera in case you had questions because I'm used to teaching this class in person where we can come over and, and speak and manipulate. And I was so afraid that, that this would be challenging for folks. Plus, I'm a little bit curious about what, it, what everybody's trying to accomplish. And when I'm in person, I can figure out that I may be working with people who are really accomplished artists and know a lot more than I do about how to build an armature, or I might be working with someone who's never done anything like this and it's their first shot. So if I am frustrating you, um, let me know <laughs> and I'll try to loop back. But for an introductory lesson, I, I wanted to go with the easy trifold. And I know that um, Paula put up this beautiful picture with fish and it was Becky um, Mace with the Midlands Master Naturalists who came to me with that wonderful fish lantern on my, on my um, 2016 solstice. And it just inspired us all to go ahead and, and start this tradition um, because on those short, dark days, you know, it's so wonderful to gather in light and, and gather friends and look back at the year past as, as it's dark and, and welcome the coming light of, of the next year. And this has always been a tradition that, that's been part of me. So light in lanterns, January, good fit. Um, so for trifold lanterns, I, I sent a list and this is um, one that I had left over from last year, pretty small and pretty easy to do. So if you're following along and doing this with me and, and I, you know, I'm looking at, at names. I'm kind of curious if y'all want to turn on your videos. If you are um, working on a lantern and ask a question with, with your video, that's absolutely fine. Uh, this is a first um, presentation where I've done where people are, are you know, hanging out. And um, if you're working on your lantern, you can, you can maybe build, build one along as we go. The tri, um, the TP kind of style, this trifold is stable and it's pretty easy to work with. I really do encourage you to think this first one is your practice lantern, so don't sweat about it a lot. Uh, because we're working with, with twigs and natural materials, they're going to tell you the, the twigs themselves kind of take a shape that um, is going to tell you what it wants to do. I think that I'm gonna get a particular shape and it, it may come out entirely different. And so one of the first, um, I've gathered all my materials here that we're going to need. I listed them. Um, nothing is set in stone. And this is just what I've, I've worked with over a few years that works really, really well. A mess of floral wire. 
um, I'll often snip the floral wire with nail clippers or your regular um, side cutters wire tools. You'll need scissors. Um, Mod Podge makes this tracing paper have a really transparent effect by the time you lay a couple coats of glue on it. I worked this up last night and you can see where I put a second coat right along here. It's wonderfully transparent. If that's the look you're going for, um, then you definitely want to use the tracing paper in Mod Podge. For getting started, parchment paper works beautifully. It's just, it, or baking parchment paper in holiday cooking, you may have a lot of that handy anyway. So Mod Podge works as does Elmer's. And we're going to um, apply that, get a, a bowl, foam brush, paint brush, a little bit of water, not quite half and half. To tie things together, um, twine and string works just as well. Dental floss, you know, we use whatever you've got in the house. And I did mention you want to, the next thing you want to think about is how you really want to use this lantern. Um, are you using it, first of all, indoors? And if, if you didn't read all the way through, I have got to with a partner who's a retired fire person tell you, do not put a candle, a burning flame in these things. There's all sorts of wonderful LED lights out there in the world. So think about before you get too far into papering yourself into a corner, for instance, with this lantern, um, I've constructed it, it's open at the bottom, but I don't really have a good way of getting the light in here anymore. You know, I can set this down over a candle um, but you'll see the candle at the base. So for our solstice parade, we used to um, provide everyone with, with a pole from which to hang their lantern. You've got to think about how you're going to incorporate your lights into the structure before you completely paper it over. So before you get that third side on, you'll want to um, leave a way in and out for you to get to batteries and boxes. Um, boy, these little... LED lights are just magnificent and give really, really great light. If I were to build this for something for the lantern parade, I would want to then put my battery pack externally on the pole for the lantern, hang the lights down into the lantern, right? inside the lantern frame, of course. And that's what I'm, I'm kind of pre-warning you. Don't paint yourself into the corner. Work those lantern, those lights into your structure before you completely paper it over. Um, and so if you're going to carry this externally in a parade, you can duct tape your um, battery box to the pole and then tie a ribbon over it to camouflage. It works really, really well. If you're doing this, um, of course, there's all sorts of wonderful and LED battery technology is getting better every day. So you can get really, really bright lights. If you're planning on using tea lights, you almost have to have the parchment paper for um, translucency because these little tiny lights are fairly dim. They're, they're popular, people have them on hand, but they're, they're not going to carry really well. Um, but then again, we said this is one of my lights that I use a lot to find things in the dark corners of the pantry or light the yard when I'm entertaining outside, right? This is almost too bright for, the, for this. But things to think about. Use, figure out what light you're going to use before you get too far into your project. So last night I assembled these. I mentioned that you might want to think about um, hitting up your recycling bin. And for me, I found a little plastic um, container, right? And I just laid that into the framework here. And I added some extra photographs from last night's build into the Facebook page too, so you can kind of see that. So, y'all ready to get started? The crowd roared, thumbs went up. <laughs> yes, we so are. <laughs> <laughs> this is just the weirdest technology. I'm going to put these down for now. I just wanted to have everything on the table. And let's all kind of start to build 
together. I, I started that one last night, laid one sheet of paper on it, realized I don't have all the parchment paper in the world. Started both of these um, last night. And um, I really do say that the tree will often kind of tell you what it wants to do. I thought these side branches were really, really nice. And so the illumination, when the light is in with these branches, the other thing about working branches along in here is that it can help support the paper. Otherwise, you've got a big long stretch of paper and, and they'll be fairly fragile. Um, one knock over and, and they're gone. If you want to use this lantern outside, um, a trip, tip from Becky with Karen, the fish. There's a question. They want to know, is it regular Mod Podge as there are so many types available now? Um, yeah, there are. What I've used on these is the gloss luster one. And so for the look that you're, if you're going after a window um, look of transparency, then that is, that's what's been used. The gloss luster has been used on these. You know, but for your practice lantern, use what you've got. Elmer's, Elmer, Elmer's will get you there too. Um, so any three sticks will work. I've got some of that evil Bradford pear for this demo project. Pruning shears. So we're going to grab three equally long pieces to get our base started. So I'll snip. You don't need to obsess about the length right off the bat because you'll find that once you've um, put those three together and they're standing in the tripod that you'll probably want to bevel the bottom so it sits flat anyway. It's going to be a little wonky at first. So we've got three pieces, same length, similar length. And here's where we're going to start putting wire on them. So you'll wire them together. I'll take the first one, wrap to that. Add the second one. And add a third. Still keep that first wrap a little bit loose because as you can see as we get to this shape, it's going to take on a little bit of a life of its own. So don't make them all tight right away. Get your go. And if this looks, if the wire, you know, the aesthetic of the finish with the wire looks a little rough to you, um, you can always come behind that and use your um, twine is a really nice the jute natural color goes really, really well with the sticks. So you can see it, mine's already a bit cattywampus, right? None of these are, are going to be lovely and perfect. Um, so if you are a type that, that likes precision and engineering, this might frustrate you and, and that's okay. Then just take your time until you get it absolutely perfect. Me, I'm kind of go with the flow. So this is, is all of these creations reflect our own personal styles for sure. And, and none of these two are alike. Once you've got this tripod frame, we've got a couple things to think about here. It is easier for your first build, if you're just learning, um, to go ahead and put your supports at the bottom. You'll need three, again, equal sticks to help support these guys together at the base. These are going to protrude from the finished lantern at the end. If that bugs you, you can put them on the interior. It's just going to take a lot um, more care in wrapping them. So for instance, on this one, I did put sticks along this bottom again to hold these three together, um, but it's a little bit trickier. So if you are doing the three sticks together, You're probably going to want to notch, but not completely cut through 
your branch. And again, this helps if you're using something pliant like willow, although any twigs will work. So I've not completely separated that. And then I'll go for the same distance on the next cut. And again, twigs going from the base diameter, you're going to have unequal dimensions on that stick, right? So I've got one that's really, really thick here and one that's thin here. If this bugs you, cut three equally distant ones. All a matter of personal preference. So this is gonna be, if you wanted to put this interior, this is how you would do it. Make the notches and bend the twig without completely severing it. And then you would affix that to the interior here. Easiest way to do that is to get a wire on each of these. So take wire and wrap it on the base of each of your twigs. And you'll wanna do that, eyeball it at about the same height because you will wind up with a cattywampus frame in a hurry. And again, we can trim, you can modify. So you're just doing a loose wrap until you get everybody settled there. But put a wire on each of your supporting tripod poles. And so I bent that interior wire. If I were going to go with an interior here, I would go ahead and affix this. It's a little bit harder to deal with, so I'm going to cut exterior ones like my demo lanterns and show that to you. Already this won't stand up. Once you get, once you get the base on, it cooperates a lot better. But if you wanted that clean look with nothing protruding from the frame, you would go ahead, maybe you know, wrap some tape on this and then slip it to the inside of your lantern. I'm going to go with the easier route. I'm also going to use the same pear branch. I think it's got that same look. So if you have any Bradford pears in your yard, cut them down, get rid of them. Um, <laughs> they're terrible trees. They, um, they go to seed to their original thorny rootstock and their illicit offspring are horrible, horrible invaders that shade out all these natives. And, and you know, with the challenges of, of habitat that we have, we need all the native plants that support all the insects and pollinators who in turn support all the birds bird populations, insect populations, they're all in trouble. So every bit of native plant that we can get into our landscapes is um, endorsing the rest of the food chain here. We, I just, these Bradford pears and invasive species, privet, um, Russian olive, Iliagnus, Ligustrum, don't buy those things, English ivy, all of it, horrible, horrible. So, cut some Bradford pear for a demo here. Although, like I said, it's, it's thorny. You gotta really be careful with that, it's just awful. So I've got three extra lengths here, three equal lengths. And we're going to fix these now with a little bit of an overlap. And so again, you're gonna just kind of do that a little loosely. Everybody doing all right? We've not lost anybody? Throwing up your hands in defeat. I feel like we should probably have some soothing music while we're doing this, right? Wait, we wouldn't be able to hear you then. <laughs> true, true. My favorite art class is I remember in elementary school, we had a, an art teacher who was pretty um, helpful with playing um, symphonic music, you know, to kind of give us inspiration. All right, there's one. 
looks like an easel, right? We could set a photo frame on there and just go around. And, and this one's going to be cattywampus right off the bat. It's OK. But you'll feel the moment you get these things in, the whole structure becomes more cooperative. First, a lot of times these little um, branch nodes and bumps can be pretty helpful too. Now, if you want to do more of these or want to um, grab some willow branches, um, if you leave some comments after afterward in this, I can cut some willow. I've, I've cut a little bit extra um, to build those two that I did last night but I can um, leave some at the park. Uh, I can leave some at Riverfront Park um, by the schoolhouse for you. Because I know not everybody knows how to identify a willow when leaves are off um, <laughs> or is keen on going out, you know, just, just because it, it's a willow in a drainage ditch doesn't mean that the property owner isn't gonna be um, upset when they see you over there with the pruning shears. So <laughs> if you need some materials, I'm happy to help you do that. You know, for the lantern workshops, we would usually go. Karen, I don't, these think, things. I don't think we're all here in Columbia. Um, oh, goodness. I'm I, sorry. That's, no, that's, <laughs> that's all right. Um, we have this on Eventbrite. And um, yeah. if, everybody, if everybody would shoot me a, a, a message in the chat saying what city and state you're in, or if you're from a different country, that would be even, that would be awesome too. Just oh, shoot where you're from. And I'm just got, I'm, I'm keeping track though, because we, we do, um, um, how do I, we have to keep track of everything for um, event planning purposes in the future. It's kind of like a, um, an audit an event audit kind of thing. So yeah, if everybody just shoots me, oh, somebody's from New Jersey. We have a lady, Paula is from San Francisco, California. For goodness um, sake. Yes, so yeah, we have a lady, Georgia. Yep, Marina's in Georgia. Um, yeah, if everybody just shoots me a little uh, a thing saying where they're from, that would be awesome. Cause um, this is a uh, Eventbrite and, and all of that makes, you know, doing this virtually is awesome. So, so those of you in Columbia, <laughs> South Carolina, um, Karen's putting them at what park again? Riverfront Park. Yeah, shoot okay. me a message and, and I'll be sure that I put some there and it's there for you. I, you know, that was a, Paula, thank you for stepping in there because that's a crazy internet assumption. I am so used to doing these on a local scale and I, I should have realized that we're, online and I've got an audience that's not all from here. Um, my bad entirely. So if you're going to gather willow from a drainage ditch, um, make sure you know the property owner. Don't just wander into somebody's, <laughs> somebody's messy patch. The nice thing for us about black willow growing in the southeast here and probably along Jersey as well as um, might not be as pliant with freezing weather is uh, that you can go ahead and cut it right now. And by this time next year, it will have grown back really, really well. It's um, pretty e easy to harvest what you're using. And it's a plant that volunteers in wet areas really, really well. So you should have um, a pretty stable base by now, right? You should be looking something like this. I hope so. Here's where you need to think about how you're lighting. So if you were planning, to light from below, this is where you'd look for something to go ahead and, and glue in or structure in. You could even build a little tiny basket across the bottom. You could wire in a support for your light here. But think about that. If you, if you need to light from below and need to rest a battery pack or a light down here, do it now. Conversely, if you're going to light from above, So if I were going to use these 
wonderful twinkling LEDs in here. I want to start incorporating them into my frame now. Um, and I would go ahead and I really like this string and I use them on the table, so I'm not going to wire them in place, but I would leave enough to get the controller onto my hanging pole to uh, camouflage later. And then I would start to tack the lights onto the frame. And you would use a floral wire for that. So just be ready to think about what you're going to do there. Also, if you're doing that, then you'll want to wrap some means of hanging from your pole. So when you are proceeding in your parade with this thing, you're going to be able to suspend it, if that's the case, or if you're going to hang it from a porch or hang it from your ceiling. Think, think about before you start to, again, paper yourself into that corner, you know, what you're going to, to do with your lights. This one's a demo for me and it's pretty rough. So I'm, I'm think I would just light it from below a little bit like we're on our way to having something like this only with the exterior support sticking out. Yep, so this one's already got a pretty good sideways lean to it. You can see, looks like it's been through a windstorm. If that bugs you while you're working on it, you can always go ahead and trim an edge of it, make it settle down. I usually wait to trim that stuff up until I've finished. So at this point, I'm going to tuck up wires, make sure everything's holding on. We are at a point where we're going to start with paper. So get some of this extraneous stuff off my workspace. Time for fun with Mod Podge. Now we've just had um, quite a bit of rain here. I did not have a chance to um, work up flower petals or leaves. This time of year is a little rough, but in the past I've used, um, I've pressed leaves or flower petals they're really, really wonderful. So, you know, we've got pansies growing right now. Some fern leaves would work. Um, ginkgo leaves have been wonderful. You can get a really, really nice look um, with this Mod Podge and leaves on there too. So I've got this mixed up. I had some water in my bowl. We're going ahead to mix that. I brought along parchment paper because you can use that. Got the rest of my paper, my tracing paper, which is pretty short supply here. I didn't realize this roll had gone down so much. So this is really um, lovely tracing paper that you can get at your art supply store. Um, our, our city art store downtown. And I will I'll lay this roughly. Sarah, we yeah. have a question. Um, they want to know if they can use handmade paper with pressed flowers. Yeah, um, handmade paper. What I would do before, um, check your translucency on it um, to see if it's going to let the light through. It sounds like it's absolutely lovely, um, but just make sure that it, it will give you the light that you want or maybe use it on one panel and not all the panels. Um, and I gave away the ones that I had leaves on last year. I think there's there's one in that photo with ginkgo leaves. Um, I really like the way that looks. I think it's a it's a really neat thing to play around with. 
So what I'm going to do here is just a really loose, um, loose outline because you leave a seam allowance. You leave some extra, about a half an inch at least, depending on the thickness of your branch, because you're going to want to wrap this around your branch. So I just kind of take pencil generously around that and work one side at a time. And, and you can't do all three of the same because they're not going to be uniform. The, the wonderful thing about these, um, I, I do them one at a time because, and you've heard me say cattywampus about 26 times already today, the, the sides are not necessarily uniform unless you are a structural engineer and, and you love precision. Uh, me, you're kind you're of kind of off time. camera at the moment. Can you hold it up when you're done to show us? Yeah, the cut? Sure. Yeah, yeah. So I've cut, woo! <laughs> 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 Dyslexic? That's me. Um, yep, yeah, so I've cut this and I laid it out for that, that okay. side. So my next step is, is the fun, messy part. And do you do you cut one and then put it on, or do, do you usually cut them all and then put them on? Nope, I do one at a time, and and for that reason that that they're not they're close to uniform but not necessarily. This is okay. a small this is a small enough lantern that I don't have a big area here um, to. But before this step on the ones with with larger areas. I will frequently build uh, branches within to help to support the paper. Um, that's a decorative option and the silhouettes are nice. This is the, you know, the super basic one to get started on. Okay. And so at this point, I take a nice batch of Mod Podge and get it on to all my the facing of what, what I'm going to wrap, and then I put it on the paper proper too. Um, if you really want this thing to be sturdy and withstand a lot of, of movement, you might consider making the time to either hot glue each of your joints or put Elmer's on there, walk away, let it set up, or um, wrap them up in twine. Again, you can see, you know, we put this together, it's got a little, little bit of play in it still. Um, I'm doing this maybe a little bit more quickly so we can kind of get through all the steps. Um, but take your time. Don't feel like on this that you've got to keep up with what I'm doing. I wanted to make sure that I could get you an overview of, of all of this and wanted to show you if you had an interest in going further with this, um, how you would begin to start a fish. But that one's beyond the scope of what we're doing here today. So, uncooperative thing. This is why you need your messy work surface. I go ahead and coat that paper because it really does give that nice transparency. And then that's So you're you're on. basically painting the whole thing then. We can't we can't I did, it yep. Out of, out yeah. Sorry, let me get that turned back a little bit. <laughs> And down. There we go. Yeah, it won't stay down. I'll back this table up a little. How's that? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Then I am also doing the same to these branches. The ones that are about to get wrapped with the with the paper. And because all these buds and knobs are on here, we might tear the paper. If you stretch this paper too tightly, the glue shrinks it a little bit. And you'll see that I dabbed extra onto the joints. This dries beautifully clear. And then really carefully pick this up if you wallpapered. That's what we're doing. And I start at the top. Make sure I'm centered. You'll see I've got overlap 
And when I get down to where there's overlap, I'm gonna grab my scissors again, make one cut right to fit. And then wrap each side there. Get one side completely in and then turn to the other. And you'll see where the overlap comes in. The paper will adhere to itself, which gives you a really nice fit. If it doesn't turn all the way over to adhere to itself, it's okay. You're going to have overlap on the next section. I'll get some of these buds and I'm just going to break the paper and wrap it over the bud here. So I've gotten a really bit of a rough surface right here. Um, it's a little tough. It looks, it's going to look a little um, rough right this minute. This is where just being patient with it will come in into play. Looks like we're going to need to cut that extra notch here from the bottom. So where I cut to fit around the, the branch previously, I'm also going to take this extra section off so I can wrap around the bottom to get that covered. So right here, I'd rather have a little bit extra and need to trim it than be short. It's easier to trim away than have a patch. And that's a little loose. Well, you don't want it stretched completely taut. I've had a couple crack on me when I made them a little bit too tight. Um, the, the glue will shrink the paper just a little bit. You also don't want it baggy. So once you've got one side dialed in, adhere to your branch. And you can, I need to put another piece of wire on this one stretch here. It's wobbly. So if this craft appeals to you a lot, you can go down the Pinterest rabbit hole. Um, you just got to look for, you know, paper and twig lantern. Um, there's a lot, of, a lot of things out there to give you some inspiration. But we're going to just go ahead and Aaron, repeat this. We have a question. Uh, what kind of wire are you using? So I'm using, um, these are foot long, Whoops, <laughs> these are foot long um, stretches of little floral wire. So it's, yeah. it's a very thin floral wire. I happen to have a lot of this on hand. It's, it's really handy to get these small lengths because you don't have to unwrap and, and snip all the time. Um, you know, the type of wire you're going to use is depending how big, if you, if you start working with, with something that's a little bit larger and heavier, like some of the stuff down here, I'm reaching the end of the limit of, of that wire, you know, to be cooperative. So when I finished um, getting these joints together, 
last night I hit them with some glue. You can see that I wired everything and then popped glue on it. And I also, you know, laid in that um, recycled tin to hold my light on the bottom of this. So one of the things um, to think about too is if you want to put the put um, twigs into your lantern to help hold the paper, the easiest way to start um, doing that is with these just little looped over ones. This is something we'll usually do in, in our lantern classes, especially um, with first time beginners. And I'm looking for twigs, here we go. So um, cuttings from your, your willow branch when you, you know, we pick willow, your wife <laughs> destroyed my office here. When you pick willow, you wind up, you know, I've got a branch that's come off the black willow. These guys you find in, um, in ditches all, all along. These are water loving plants. Um, lovely pliancy, right? This is why people have uh, done basketry with them. Um, so you, you know, you'll wind up, of course, using these sticks for your base, but you're losing a lot of these little twigs along the way. And these turn out, one, some of the shapes just are, are absolutely gorgeous, but it's easy to, right? Ta-da! You've got this loop. And so if I were to want to put that in here, I would go ahead and get a little wire to loop that together. So, and then I would affix it here again. Take the wire here, wrap it. So I'm going to have to trim that one off right away because I didn't wrap it, but you can wrap it on the second side here. So take this. So depending on what, what branches you're working with, you know, there's so much one of the things I used to love to do just in, in winter, it, it's you drive around and, and you look at the trees bare of leaves and you get to see the, the beautiful forms of branches. And, uh, you know, when you're working with whatever your branches are, you're going to um, find things that you want to incorporate or show off in your lantern. So let's see, we've gotten this into the structure. I've wired it here. Because we already had the paper on this side, I'm just going to trim it close there and I've wired it right here. So I'm going to take the pruning shears and get that flush with the tripod. Flush. You. You need to sharpen these shears. Come on. Whoop. <laughs> it's the top here. I have got to wrap this top. Every time I think I've got my stability issues addressed. Okay. 
So who's building along with us? Uh, are, are you all doing all right? I'm thinking maybe they're just watching so that they can build later. Oh God, I'm torturing you all, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> this Zoom business, we'll survive. Okay. I'm definitely watching so I can build later, but I appreciate the slowness of your process here so I can see if that goes wrong for me, I won't be surprised. You already had it go wonky and you know what to do and you fix it up very nicely. Thank you. <laughs> well, good. That's that's reassuring. Um, it, it, this is odd to do in this setting without the the, the feedback or to, to know. All right. So you, you've had a little bit of both. You've got, you know, the no covering, the covering. We're going to go ahead and repeat those steps on all these sides. So I'll lay down again on my gluey table. It gets messy. All right, pretty close to that. Give some room to wrap. So this is just one, one way of doing things too. Um, some of the workshops we did with, with smaller children, I uh, got really nice large balloons and blew them up in strips of paper and started to wrap the balloons with strips of paper. I found though with that, that you'll want to also saturate string. So if you've got white cotton butcher's twine, um, use that too, that the, once you pop the balloon to get your lantern out of the, that form, um, the paper might not be strong enough to, to hold that sphere unless you go with lots and lots and lots of coats. So use um, string or some, you know, wrap the wire so it'll hold the form. All right, same thing. We're gonna repeat this whole happy procedure. Saturating. here and saturating here. So messy. So I think I, I started to recount before my, my friend Becky Mace, who um, inspired our winter solstice lantern parades and built gorgeous fish, um, which you'll see, I shared the video link from our 2017 parade. Um, she wound up going with silk, um, a fine silk instead of paper. Um, I think because she wanted that lantern to last a really long time. I mean, after you build something that takes a very long time, you, you'll, um, and she wanted to maybe use it a little bit more outdoors, you know. If we have our lantern parade on a misty or rainy night, we can wind up with a bunch of paper pulp in no time flat. So there are other mediums that you can use. You'll see that I've, you know, put the glue onto there. And now, now that I've got, that support in here, I'm kind of running my finger on there to, to get it to stick to. And here's a twig that's just not going to cooperate. I'm going to cut that one off. Debating, you know, these, um, the pear branches are so tough. Um, and it's neat to, to have that. but they get in the way. All right, again, here we're right about here when we wanna wrap. I'll take that end off, square. Same 
thing there square okay so we've notched ah stuck to your fingers this can get pretty frustrating and then you're going to have all this stuff to peel off your fingers um i was a mess last night it's also something that really is satisfying bringing me back to all the wonderful childhood Elmer's glue projects, right? Okay. So again, you'll just take time to affix this to your branches. And the more deliberate you are, the better the results. You know, twofold, do, do be very forgiving to yourself if it's your first project. Um, do be deliberate and take your time. Um, yeah, that, that branch right there, that twig, I'm just going to pull the paper through it. Cool, cool. All right, so that's our next one. And we just go and, and finish all of those. So I think you've got the gist of what we're doing here. Um, there are so many variations on this. I, I haven't really built the square ones. They're a little bit harder to support, um, but you, if you go on Pinterest, you will find a lot of other forms. Like I said, these triangle ones are pretty easy to get started with. Um, you can also think about, once you've got that built, if you love the way that the, the bare wood looks, you could consider adding you know, an exterior frame to that where you would cut three more and you would have that sit on the outside of that. I've seen some double layers. You know, the branches themselves can be just so absolutely beautiful that there's a lot of, a lot of fun to be had. So I think we've covered the basics of how to get that done um, with some of the warnings about the things, you know, the worst things I've done is make something and then have, have no way to get my lights in. Um, and please don't use flames, whatever you're up to. I am going to um, bust out some willow branches and I've not really even trimmed them, but um, those fish are absolutely beautiful. So if, if any of you have your heart set on doing that, um, you're gonna need a big workspace, one, to make a mess in. Um, and then I would really recommend working with willow. I did a, a fish last year because Becky kept inspiring me and, and she's actually done an owl as well. <laughs> it's just, you wind up with this large armature over which to, to drape your paper or fabric. And um, when I started working on the larger structure for the fish, I wound up mounting that whole thing on a, on a pole, on a chair. So I had a, a workspace, but I'm gonna clear my table off to the side a little bit to show you, I'm trying to not knock over glue while I'm doing this. So here, get all these guys out of the way. This could be a disaster. Uh, and you're recording it, aren't you, Paula? <laughs> okay. So right here, I've got essentially two nice, willow branches, right? One's here, the other's here. See, when you start to look at the branch, sometimes it, it can almost tell you what it wants to be. When you look along this line with the willows, you can see almost these um, top and bottom fins on the fish coming out, right? So you think, I've got, I've got a fish right here. And what you wanna do, and I'm a real fan of, of letting the branch tell you, you know, what it wants to be. So you, I, I, am, I tend to play with them a little bit. The hardest part of the fish for me is the mouth. I have not gotten a good mouth yet. And that's the kind of thing, if I were to build one again today, um, I probably start to incorporate um, the neck of a, a plastic 
soda bottle, something, something in there to help form that because these branches don't cooperate. But what you can do, of course, you would trim these guys off, but leave, leave what, um, so trim the ones at the front that are extra, you know, kind of decide ahead of time where your major fins are going to be. I'm going to need something. There's my bottom fin and here's my top one. So I'm going to get rid of these guys. You can always make more, but then attaching them gets a little tricky. And this one coming up might help me with the interior structure. But anyway, this is the beginning of this. This is a case where you would want something a lot more than um, floral wire. So you can use your rubber band to get started. And you would take that and bend. Bend these two guys together, right? <laughs> I'm backing up this outer scope. Yeah, so you can almost see how we are here. We would bend these, bend that, bend that, bend that, wire that together, and then start to work two more branches in so you would have at least four and you've got that cylinder. The wonderful thing about this willow is that it's really gonna flex for you. It's gonna be super forgiving while you're working. Um, once you get that, and this is almost a two person project, you know, once you get that then, what I did was affix a pole because if you're doing it for a lantern again, or you're, you're either going to have to hang this or stand it. So go ahead and think about how you're mounting it again. And especially with a fish, you want to think about lighting it. If you're lighting it from the inside, you're going to have to build whatever those lights are inside before you paper it over. But um, that's very much beyond the scope of of our simple make a paper lantern class, I think, but I did want to mention it because um, that image of the fish was on our initial um, meeting invite. So I think Paula that, that I've done as, as much damage as I can for one, one class. So, um, so after you get the third side on and it's just the same as the other two sides, how long do you let this dry for before you uh, use it as a lantern? At least a day. You'll see. Um, so I did these. I finished them up last night after work, right? Um, so I was getting the glue on these pretty late last night, um, 10, 11 for me. And uh, so it's it's dry now. Okay. Um, but for the, for the look of this, I would like to um, put on a second coat. Right, so I have more translucency. So a lot of times when it dries, or this would be the nice part if you've gotten your base on, to then go ahead and get those pressed pansies or violas or fern leaves, right, and then put them on and you can um, incorporate botanical stuff onto it. Like I said, the for, I've had wonderful luck with ginkgo leaves and fern leaves. Um, some year, the flower petals will Fade a little bit over time, but they're really pretty too. Unfortunately, I gave those away last year, so it's like the same lanterns that were in my picture are all gone. But it's fun. They were wondering if you had um, the fish one there or pictures of it that you could share, but I told them they're on the website or the Facebook page. I did. Yeah, I put. Um, which one do we want to on the Facebook page? They're wanting to know what the fish one looks like. And that was the one uh, I used to advertise the class with. Yeah. So, yeah. It was I, like, yeah. I think, look at the YouTube video. I posted um, our 2017 Lantern Parade. I, I slipped that on while we were gathering for this meeting. And um, if I have some other photographs, I think of Becky's fish, I can put that on there. They're really spectacular. There was also, uh, I can go back and find that link and add it. The inspiration for us came from North Carolina, from the Hillsboro Arts Council. Um, they had a series of lantern workshops and then they did the Eno River Lantern Parade. And um, it looks like they had hundreds and hundreds of people show up. 
and it was it was really spectacular. So for those of you who are anywhere near Columbia, um, boy, the post pandemic lantern parade next next uh, winter solstice, if you can come join us, we will celebrate. They're wanting to know what the YouTube name is listed under. Um... Um, it's a city of Columbia, South Carolina, Winter Solstice Lantern Parade. That ought to get you there. And the Hillsboro Arts Council, you might have to dig because it's a little older. Um, but I think if you put Eno, E-N-O, River, um, Winter Solstice, you've got, and there's also um, uh, an artist there who um, did a grapevine sculpture, kind of a house, a big, uh, wonderful house made out of natural materials. It's, it's a really pretty video, so. All right, I wanna thank everybody for coming. Thank you, Karen, for um, this class. This was awesome. Um, we have, we're gonna be doing one of these every month, um, different kinds of classes. Uh, next month, I have a gentleman who has a 3D printer and he's gonna show us what 3D printing is all about and be there to answer questions. I know I'm interested in it, but I'm, I'm hesitant to buy one without you know, maybe talking to somebody about one. So uh, yeah, next month is uh, 3D painting. Um, the month after that is Pakistani eggs. Um, and then the month after that is finger knitting. Also, we're still looking to fill in some months. So if you know of anybody or you or yourself are interested in doing a demo class like this, it's as easy as Karen made it look. You just set up so that you can um, see what's going on and answer questions. Um, and we are also doing what we're calling cuisine of other cultures, or I'm sorry, cuisine of different cultures. Um, and we're doing them once a month as well. Um, the next one we have is actually next Saturday, and it's going to be a vegetarian haggis. And um, <laughs> yes, if anybody knows anything about haggis, it is not vegetarian <laughs> normally. So that one is, I have I have 100 people signed up for that class already. Oh my goodness. Um, my mother, yeah, my mother. Was... I'll come, but it, it'll be interesting <laughs> to see how many do come because of what, what the class is about. Um, but we also have slots for uh, uh, instructors for those as well. But we also have several classes already set up. Um, next month is going to be a fr uh, French quiche. And the month after that is going to be a Jewish, um, I can't remember what it is, exactly she called it. Um, but it's basically a Jewish, like French toast, kind of like bread bit without toast with matzah crackers. I think it was called uh, matzah brie. Um, but yes, we have something going on every month. Um, if you have joined us from Eventbrite, you can see everything we have going on at the Atlantic Institute at, if you Google Atlantic Institute, uh, South Carolina. Um, we are doing all of our programs virtually right now. And even when we go back to doing our programs in person, we've decided that um, we wanna still be able to reach like California, New Jersey and Tennessee and all of those places. So we will be doing, um, once we go back to in-person doing our classes virtually or, or, or our, our events virtually as well. So um, thank you everyone. Um, if you have any more questions, go ahead and pipe in now. Otherwise, we're going to close it out for the day. And like I said, this video will be on YouTube next week. Cool. Thanks, Paula. Thank you, Karen. Anybody have questions? I do, Paula. Uh, I just had a oh. question for Karen again. Uh, what okay. was the paper she used, the roll of paper, the big nut? It, it was a tracing paper, a oh, roll tracing of tracing paper. paper, and I, I got that at the art supply store. Okay. So okay. Our, our place where um, downtown where they sell, you know, oil paints and watercolors and pastels and frames and canvas, a good art store. So maybe a place like Hobby Lobby or something would have it? Probably so. Um, I tried last night to see the label on here because I hit the end of the roll and it wasn't much more than a barcode. There are oh, okay. various shades, but it, it will be a, a fine art tracing paper. Okay, um, thank you. It gives that really nice transparent look, look by the time you get.
Any other questions? Thanks, y'all. Stay well. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Bye.